Praise Jesus. Praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And for the Rock Intercessor Ministries, I'm here today to preach to you the word of Jesus Christ, word of internal life, hoping that some of you will give your life to Jesus Christ today. Today's message is, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. Are you my friend? Are you passing the salt? Are you gossiping? Just Christ said, in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13, you are the salt of the earth. Not somebody else, you. You, my dear friend, you are the salt of the earth. But in the salt, how lost is taste. How shall the saltness be restored? It is no longer good for anything. I said to be thrown out and be trampled under people's feet. What a verse. What a marvelous verse, my dear friend. I'm thinking today, and I want to talk to you today about salt. Probably some of you today have put salt in your eggs. Some of you today have eaten your sheep with salt in it. But salt is very necessary for life. Salt is a compound. It's been made of two elements, sodium and chlorine. Those are the two dangerous things. That if you, die in, if you indigest any one of them, you, you will die. And yet, God in his chemistry has put together soda and chromine. And today we call it table salt. It is necessary for life. And I want you to think, and what I have think, what God have done. God have taken that that is deadly part of my nature. And God has made something out, out of it new. So God has given it a new name, just as he done with Sodom and Korai. We call it today salt. And just Christ say, you my friend, you are the salt of the earth. I want to talk to you today about the salty scent. I want you to see first of all what I call dynamic of pure salt. Dynamic of pure salt. Why did Jesus Christ use this metaphor? Why did Jesus Christ use this bigger speech? Why did Jesus Christ describe those people who are living in beatitude? Why did he call them, you are the salt of the earth? I want you to understand the importance of salt in Jesus Christ's time. In that society, pure salt was a commodity. It was more valuable than gold. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, a pure salt was so rare those days. And it was the major and the medium of exchange in that society. And that's why today, if you say you got your salary, those days they call it salt money. And this salt money is what we call salary today. So I want you to understand why Jesus Christ looked at the fishermen and he said to the fishermen, you are the salt of the earth. Salt preserve things. The fishermen those days, they use the salt to preserve the fish. The same way today, the word of God is the gospel of that sort. That will come in your life and he will preserve you, my dear friend. And that's why Jesus Christ said, you are the salt of the earth. Why do you have to be the salt of the earth? Now listen to what the Bible says here in the book of Job. And here is the question. Can which is unsovereign be eaten without salt? Is there any test in the white of an egg? The obvious answer is no. So what does salt do? Salt, my dear friend, preserve things. Salt also heals and salt retains and salt burns. God bless you, sir. I heard about a boy who said, there's nothing good in the food if there's no salt in it. And he's right. My dear friend, are you a Christian? If you're not salt of the earth, there's nothing good in your life. You need to think twice. Because just Christ say, you are the salt of the earth. And I want every Christian to know this. We have to be the salt in this society. This society needs the salt today, my dear friend. The Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, let your speech always be gracious, and listen to this, season with salt. Let your speech be gracious, season with salt. And I come here today to tell you that as a Christian, we ought to do... God bless you, sir. Sorry? There's, there's, there's a lady over there having a mental health breakdown. Could you, could you quiet down for about five, five minutes until she's gone? So you don't want me to preach the word of God until she's gone? No, for like five, five, five minutes or something. Or, 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 or
because it's because every it's, excuse people make not to no, no, hear no, no, word of God. I, every I, excuse. I'll stop you, Jack, as well. Understand. Must, I, every excuse. What is this man saying that is salt of the earth? It's salt of the earth. It's not what he's saying. The volume. So if I lower the volume, can I preach? Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. But the moment she she goes, you can turn it up again, yeah. You know, sir, fight, sir. Okay. No, but the more is, the more is. 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 The the world is yeah, doomed. Every excuse people make to stop word of God. No, I, 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 preach, I, I, preach, I, I, preach, preach, preach. I am a still preacher as well. Yeah. Preach. I preach in the train. Yeah, preach. Every excuse with the human being made to the stop word of to God. God. Not belong to man. Preach. Every excuse. Okay. This man. Let, 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 let her pass. Let her pass. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. There's every excuse for we Christians not to preach the word of God. But let me say to you today, if we Christians keep quiet in this world, this world, this nation, we, you are throwing your way to hell so quickly, my dear friend. The Bible says we are the salt of the earth. If you are not the salt of the earth, my dear friend, what you are? Because Jesus Christ said, if the salt is not test anymore, it's good for nothing. Are you a Christian? Are you good for not a Christian? The Bible says you are the salt of the earth. And I want to tell you today, my dear friend, that we must be the salt of the earth. It's so obvious because there's a preserving power of the salt. The world today needs the salt. And I come here today to spread the salt around. The salt of the gospel news of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, whether you, whether you want to hear it or not, I'm preaching the word of eternal life. You have the choice to make today. As a matter of fact, we must understand salt also is what antiseptic, salt retains, salt burns. And Jesus Christ said, You are the salt of the earth. And then in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 49, everyone shall be test, be tested, be sorted with fire. What's he saying? He's saying that there's a common, there's a commonness and there's a, there's a togetherness with salt and fire. And we know our God is a consuming fire. So, my dear friends, a lot of people today do not understand the gospel news of our Lord Jesus Christ. But I tell you today, if you do not, there's no offense, there's no effect. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is not here to massage you, it's not here to cuddle you, it's here to tell you if you are a sinner, you need to repent from your sin. Amen. You see, we are not expect this world to love us. Listen, I'm not here for you to love me. But what I want from you is respect. Christians today have been bullied, have been misused. What we need here is respect. Just Christ said, if you be careful and beware when all men speak well about you. So today, I want to tell you that you ought to be the salt of the earth. Because why? Salt penetrates. Salt heals. And salt retains. This society today, we lack salt, and we need salt. May I tell you today that Christians are the salt of the earth. And we Christians who believe sexual immorality is a sin, fornication is a sin, adultery is a sin, homosexuality is a sin, lesbian is a sin, transgender is a sin, LGBT is a sin, and it is not okay to be gay. It is not okay to be gay. I reboot that spirit, it is not okay to be gay. It is not okay to give children condoms in the school. Stealing is a thief. Are you the same other friends? So we don't do correct, uh, political correctness. The word of God is not for you to be political correctness to you. That's not the word of God. The word of God comes with salt. And salt burns. Salt retains. You see, my dear friend. So I want you to understand here today. Abortion is a mother. Killing baby is a mother. Our problem here today, the sickness today is not coronavirus, another sickness. Our sickness is sin. And sin that is something that separates us from God. Apostle Paul explained to us in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23. That is the wages of that sin. 
That's how God stops you from sinning. The Bible said, Death is the wages of sin. Apostle Paul also said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56, The stink of death is sin. There's a power of sin, and that power is the law. So, sin stinks and still causes us death. What is the cause of sin? It's our death. Jesus Christ came and tell us we are the salt of the earth. This world need this salt. This city need this salt. No harm barrow needs salt. I'm not coming here today to spread the salt around. Jesus Christ said, You are the salt of the earth. If God's people, good people, do not speak up and do not stand up, this country is going to hell. And quickly, and I want you to understand this. We, we need to separate ourselves from sin. Yes. Association for sinners? Absolutely not. Social distancing from sin? Yes. Distancing ourselves from sinners? No. We are called to be the salt of the earth. The problem I have here today, many Christians are glorified shakers, but the salt never goes out. Are you a Christian? Are you playing it safe? No wonder too many people today making their way to her. Because if you believe that you are salt of the earth, my dear friend, you have to be that salt of the earth. You have to spread the salt. Just because I say you are the salt of the earth, the salt penetrates. And that is the dynamic of the pure salt. I want to also talk to you today about the dispensation of the pollution of salt. Polluted salt. That's what Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. But, but, if the salt loses its taste, how shall its taste less be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown away and trapped under people's feet. So my dear friends, we the Christians in this day and this age we are living, we can never hide ourselves. We have to be the salt of this earth. You say about the counseling, they're never supposed to love us. I don't care whether they love us or not. I don't want them to love us. Just Christ said, Beware when all men speak well of you. In the book of John, John said, First John chapter 2, verse 15, Do not love the world or anything that is in this world. I just want their respect. This world no longer respect Bible believing Christians. And it breaks my heart. This was supposed to be a Christian country, but not anymore. And today, Many Christians who are Tesla sort have been trapped down and they are the cause of the problem I have here today because they never listen to the word of God. So I have talked to you right now about dynamic people of the sort, the pure sort. I have talked to you about the speciation, about the protected sort. Finally, my dear friend, I want to talk to you about the preserving of the sort. There's no ever time that we need in this age than this time we are living. We are on the last days. I wonder how many people today who don't know Jesus Christ showing their way to hell. Because of why? Tesla's sought saints. We are not willing. We are ashamed about the gospel news of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am so alarmed. Many Christians, even my church members, even your church members, who refuse to be the salt of the earth. You have to beg them to come to evangelism. You have to tell them to go and evangelize. You have to talk to adults like babies. And I have so many babies in the church. And this world, and people are dying. Every second, someone dies without giving their life to Jesus Christ. They die, they go to hell. If that does not break your heart, who, what a Christian are you? You are good for nothing, Christian. You have time for gossip. You don't have time for gospel. Jesus Christ said, be the salt of the earth. So, my dear friend, I am not ashamed about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is power of salvation for those who believe. This country, there's too many killing, there's too many abortion, there's too many knife crime, there's too many pornography, there's too many sexual immorality, there's too many social perversion, there's too many drug addicts, there's too many drunkards. And still, we the Christians, we don't preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What this country needs is Jesus Christ. This country. This borough, no harm. We need Jesus Christ. This city, we need Jesus Christ. When do we need it? Now. Now. For the Bible said today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. Why? Because tomorrow may never come for some of us. This country, this place, this time, this nation, this world, we need revival. We need revival. We need God. We need Bible. We need prayers. We need love. We don't need interfaith. We don't need condoms in the schools. We don't need sexual education. We don't need uh, homosexuality being taught to our children in the school. We don't need all this. It is the time the sword go to work and to regain the sword. 
that have been lost. My dear friend, love is being forsaken as lost today. Satan is being worshipped as saint. Man is being magnified before his maker. It is a time the soul goes to work. And I want to tell you something else, my dear friend. Not only that the UK is right for judgment, UK is now being judged. This nation has been judged. The judgment of God is coming. One of these days, God is going to judge this nation. Before that time comes, I want to tell you, we don't have any hope. And number 10, there's no hope in Parliament. There's no hope in the House of the Lord. There's no hope in Mayor's Office. There's no hope in society. There's no hope in education. Our hope is in God alone. My dear friend, we need God. Our problem is not the media. It's not pornography. It's not alcohol industry. It's not the crook uh, politicians. Our problem today, my dear friend, is tasteless sort. Christians who are not willing to do the work of God that God has come to do. It is about time the soul go to work. You say, Brother Kinsley, are you an optimist or pessimistic? My dear friend, I'm realist. I believe as long as there is God, there is hope. And I believe in God that you can need revival. And I hope that you believe the same thing. Because why? if you believe in God, I want to tell you, our God is not dead. Our God is not old. Our God is not sick. Our God has not lost his power. Our God is alive today. And our God will do a mighty work. And that's why Jesus Christ said, you, my dear friend, you are the salt of the earth. Nobody else, not somebody else, you, my dear friend, you are the salt of the earth. Why not accept Jesus Christ today and give your heart to him so that he can be the salt of the earth. We are called to be the salt of the earth. And Jesus Christ warned us, if the salt loses severing, if the salt loses its taste, the salt is set for good for nothing. Rather than to be thrown down and be stamped down upon the people's faith. And that's why many Christians today have been stepping down and marching all over them. Why? Because they have lost their test. My dear friend, come back today and give your heart to Jesus Christ. Remain blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus is Lord.